Hey there, my name is Julian, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can get MemberStack working with Elementor and WordPress in just a couple of minutes. So I'm going to go over all of the basic stuff in this video that you need to know in order to build really any kind of membership site. There's some, some more complex stuff that we're not going to get into in this video. That being said, this should give you a pretty good idea of how to do just about everything that you need to do. So without further ado, let's get right into it. The first thing that you're going to want to do in order to set up member stack with your Elementor site is you're going to want to go to plugins. You're going to want to click add new plugin and you're going to want to search for the member stack plugin. Oops, I typed in all caps, whatever should still come up. There we go. Let's go ahead and hit install on that. Once it's installed, we are going to go ahead and activate it. So now that we got it activated, let's go ahead and head over here to member stack. And the first thing that you're going to want to do is add in your member stack app ID. So you can get that once you first create a member stack account and create an app, you are going to be faced with this get started screen. If you don't see it, go ahead and hit get started up here and it will take you there. So first things first, we need to install the member stack plugin, which we've already done. So now we need to add our member stack app ID. You can click this button to copy it and then head back over into WordPress, paste in your app ID, hit save. And as you can see, your site is now connected to member stack. The next thing that we need to do in order to get this working with Elementor is add in the Elementor add-on. So as we can see here, I've already got it installed. Uh, essentially what you're going to see is something like this. What you see here for Gutenberg, if you already have Elementor installed, if not, it's going to be grayed out. You do need to have Elementor before you add the add-on. So go ahead, check that off and hit save changes. The next thing that I want to go ahead and show you is short codes. If you do use short codes, then we have a whole bunch of them, which you can use. You can access the full list of them from right here within the member stack plugin. So the next thing that you're going to want to do on your site is set up some forms, a login form and a sign up form that are working. So I'm going to show you how easy that is to do with member stack right now. Let's go to our pages. And here we have a blank home page and a blank gated page. On this home page, we're going to put our login and our sign up form. And on the gated page, we are going to put a profile form. And we're going to take a look to make sure that page is blocking non authenticated members from accessing it. Anyways, first things first, let's edit the home page with Elementor. And as we can see over here, we just have a totally blank page. Let's type in member stack. And as we can see, we have member stack login, sign up, modal button, all sorts of different things. Uh, let's go ahead and use the sign up one. So as we can see right away when we add it in, we have a nice looking working signup form. We can use this right off the bat, but I'm going to show you a couple of different options that you do have with it. First things first, you can show a title. Let's say you want to change this to say create an account. You can do that. Uh, you can change the HTML tag of the title. Let's say you have a signup page and your title is signup. Well, you can make that your H1. I'm going to go ahead and leave that as H3 for now. You can add a redirect URL. So in member stack, you can actually set redirects directly in the dashboard. So for example, you can go to plans and set the default redirects right here. That being said, you can use this um, redirect control to override that. So let's say you have a signup form that you really specifically want to go to one page. You can override that. You can also add a plan ID. I'm not going to get into that right now in this video. You can enable passwordless signups, which would make it so instead of a email and a password, a user would enter their email here. They would hit sign up. It would then send them a code to their email, which they would use to verify. Removes the need for a password and it is super secure. So along with that, we have social signup and we have a couple options here, but Google, which is by far the most popular one, uh, is actually fully enabled by default. So if you want to go ahead and let's say set up GitHub signup, Facebook signup and LinkedIn signup, you will need to create uh, developer accounts with those tools, whereas Google is actually right out of the box enabled. So there's nothing more that needs to be done in order to get Google signup working, except for what I've already done. You can also add, I'm not going to do that right now, but additional fields in case you want to capture custom fields like first name, country, anything like that on sign up. So some other options that we have are around styling. So as you can see over here, we can change a whole bunch of things. Let's say we want to add more spacing to the bottom of our title. I can do that just like so. Let's go ahead and unlink these values and make it a little bit more. There we go. 
let's say that looks good. Maybe a little bit of white space, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and set the button background color to black, let's say, like so. And then let's set the hover background color to a nice blue. Just like that. So as you can see, we have a decent bit of styling options that you can use to make this uniquely work for you. And in the advanced settings, we have a whole bunch of stuff that you are used to seeing with Elementor. That all applies here as well. So let's go ahead and publish this form and try it out. So here we are on our live publish page. And as we can see down here, we have this member stack test mode. And we can use this to troubleshoot in case there are any problems with anything that we set up. But as we can see here, everything looks good. Attributes were found. They are the correct attributes. So let's go ahead and hide this. So now let's go ahead and make a test account. Let's do AAA at AAA.com and see what happens. Hit sign up. And as we can see, you've successfully signed up. Now we haven't set any redirect, so it's just going to leave me here. But let's go ahead and check our member stack dashboard to make sure that it indeed did sign us up. So over here, we can see AAA at AAA.com. So that means it indeed did sign us up. Now I'm going to show you how to make a login form and the process is just about the exact same. So go ahead again, add a widget, search for member stack and add member stack login. As we can see here, we have this form. Let's go enable social login with Google login, show a title and say, well, login, let's leave that. All of this stuff, let's leave as default for now. Now, if we go publish this and go back over to our page, as we can see, we also have a login form. Since I'm already logged in, all of these are pre-filling with my AAA email that I created. Um, so there we go. We now have working authentication. Now, if I go ahead and click, for example, continue with Google, as we can see, this is popping up. Now it says continue to memberstack.com. Um, you could actually add a custom email. That being said, you need a Google developer account for that. So there we go. We have everything on our home page working. The next thing that I want to go ahead and show you with member stack is gated content. So as you know, we've already created our gated page over here in WordPress. And if I right now want to go, let's say to slash gated, as you can see, I am on this page. No problem. That being said, I am logged in. Let's go ahead and use the inspector to log me out to see what is going to happen. I'm going to refresh. As we can see, I'm here on the gated page. It's not taking me away. It's just a normal page. We want to fix that and actually make this gated. How do we do that? Let's go ahead and go into our member stack over here. Let's go to gated content and let's create a new group. Let's just go ahead and call this gated. Um, I'm going to grant it to all members. Now you can also grant it to only members who have access to a certain free or paid plan. I'm not going to go over plans in this video. So let's leave it at all members and let's set restricted URLs. So my URL that I've created here is actually slash gated. So let's go ahead and set it to that. Now I could make this, let's say all of the pages, child pages of gated or app or anything like that and have it set to started too. I can also make it only equal to if let's say some pages that have gated in the title, I don't want to gate, you have total control over there. And then for the access denied URL, let's leave this blank and have it send it to the homepage. So if I go ahead and save this right now, now I'm going to go ahead and head back over here into WordPress and I'm going to go to the member stack plugin. Now, if I go right here to gated content and hit refresh gated content, as we can see, my gated group got saved. So now let's go ahead and try that again. This is that gated page that we were on. I'm going to go ahead and refresh. Let's see what happens. I've refreshed and it has completely securely blocked access to that gated page. And instead it's taken me here to this home page, which in reality, this would probably be like an access denied page or something like that, but doesn't matter. So now I can go ahead and sign up. Let's go ahead and make some nonsense account right over here and hit sign up. Now, as you can see, you're successfully signed in. Now, if I go ahead and navigate to slash gated, what we're going to see is that I'm able to access it. Right now, it's totally blank. I'm going to show you a couple more really cool things that MemberStack can do over here on this blank gated page. So let's go back over here into WordPress. And the next thing that I want to show you how to do is actually set up a profile form, which is exactly as easy as you would expect it to be. 
after seeing the logins and signup forms. So here we are, let's go ahead and edit our gated page in Elementor. All right, so here we are on our gated page. Let's go ahead and add a profile form. So I'm just gonna type in member stack again. And as we can see here, we have member stack profile. So it just looks like a button in, in a little box. Uh, let's go ahead and set it to update profile like that. And then let's add items. So here, by default, we have first name and last name fields in member stack. That being said, all you need to do is go to members and in your custom fields, you can create new custom fields. Let's say, for example, country, save custom field. And now we have a custom field called country, which can be used perfectly fine in Elementor. So let's go ahead and set this to first name and leave it as not required. Let's go ahead and do another one for last name, member stack field, last name. And there we go. So now we have this. Let's go ahead and publish it. Let's go right over here and let's refresh. So here we are and let's go ahead and set our name to be Bob Saget. Bob Saget, update profile. And as we can see, that's saved. Let's refresh. As we can see, Bob Saget has remained. And if we go into member stack and take a look at our member, then as we can see, our member's name is set to Bob Saget. And I can also update this as the admin. So let's go ahead and say Bob Saget lives in Serbia. We can do that and hit save. And now Bob Saget lives in Serbia. So the next thing that I wanna show you that is really cool is showing member data. So I'm gonna go back over here and let's go ahead and create a heading. Let's put that right over here and let's just make this a nice little welcome text saying, hey, Bob Saget, welcome back. Or let's just say Bob. We're on a first name basis with our friend Bob over here, right? So let's say welcome back. And then what we're gonna do here is the following. First, we need to create our backup text. So if that member does not have a first name set, we want to say welcome back member. And then what are we going to do in order to show the name? We're gonna create a span and add an attribute to it. So member stack works off of attributes. There's a lot of stuff that are not yet native features with the Elementor add-on, which can be accomplished using custom data attributes. And right there, as we can see, we have this. So if I do bracket span and then data dash ms dash member, equals quote first dash name and i'll show you where to get that in just a second close off that span with another bracket and then add a closing span right here as we can see it says welcome back member here in elementor and it is perfectly fine let's go ahead and hit publish on that and then go over here and refresh as we can see welcome back bob let's make it bobbert instead of bob I update it, as we can see, it is now welcome back, Bobbert. Make it, hello, Saget. And now it says, welcome back, hello. So that is how you very easily display member data with member stack in Elementor. Now, just to show you how you get that field, um, because I typed in data-ms-member equals first-name. How do you actually know what that field is? So go back into your member stack dashboard, go to custom fields and pick whichever one you want to use. Let's say first name, for example, hit the little pencil, the edit icon, and you can see right here the name and the ID, the value of your custom field. So you can use this anywhere that you want. So the next thing that I wanted to do a little bit of talking about and introduce you to is a couple of other things with member stack that I'm not going to show in this video. That being said, if you are really excited to use member stack with Elementor, please drop comments in the, um, well, in the comment section and we will make a whole bunch more tutorials for Elementor for you. So one thing that member stack has is called plans. Now there are two kinds of plans. There are free plans and paid plans. So if I go over here, as we can see, I can add a free plan and a paid plan. Now, free plans you can use to, let's say, differentiate your members. So let's say you have a language learning course and you are teaching Arabic and Spanish. Well, you can have a free plan for Arabic and for Spanish, and you can use that free plan to change, let's say, where they're going to be redirected which content they can and can't see. They can also have both Arabic and Spanish and be able to see both of those. And then paid plans, it's the same thing, but well, of course, with money. So if you go ahead and set up a paid plan, you can have it set to charge monthly, 
yearly. You can have setup fees. You can do anything that you want to do with that. And again, you can gate content fully securely. All of that is done through Stripe. Now, along with that, one other thing that I want to mention with MemberStack is that all members have more data than just custom fields. So if I go over here, we can see metadata and we can see JSON. Now, how you use this, again, video coming on that one later. That being said, you can store metadata on data, which let's say looks different across various members. And this can only be updated from either the admin API or the admin panel where we are right now. And then JSON is structured data, which you can create for your members to save data directly to them, which again can look different across members, but that can be actually updated directly on the front end. So that is it. That is what I really wanted to show you on how you can get started using MemberStack with your WordPress and Elementor site. So the last thing that I want to say is this. We here at MemberStack are really excited about WordPress and we're just getting into it now. We are a community-oriented company. Everything that we do, we want to do it for you. If you go to the description right now, the first link that you're going to see is our new WordPress Slack community. If you could join that, anything, any questions that you may have, any tutorials that you may want to see, we really want to make those for you. So please join. Please let us know what you're excited about, how we can help you build your subscription business with WordPress and Elementor. I'll talk to you soon. I'll see you in the Slack and have a great day.